Hi everybody, I'm going to try to explain a concept that's going to be valuable for recreational players and lower stakes regulars, um, and I'm going to try to do it without going on too many tangents, because there are a lot of exceptions to what I'm about to say, but it's still really helpful to know. The first thing is just an idea for thinking about poker. It's not theory, it's just some way to understand the game. 100 Big Blind Poker is a game that more or less has six bets in it. What do I mean by that? I mean that the blinds are always the first bet. And then after that, a three bet will be the, uh, so the raise will be the second bet, a three bet will be the third bet, a four bet will be the fourth bet, and if you get called, two additional bets can be placed after the plop, flop. So four bet, bet on the flop, bet on the turn, that's six bets, right? In a three bet pot, bet on the flop, bet on the turn, bet on the river, that's six bets. In a two bet pot, where it just goes raise and call, you kind of have to bet the flop, get check raised on the turn, and then somebody shoves the river is like the only way to get stacks in. So, you know, normally only five bets are placed in a two bet pot. So raise, call, bet, 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 and the stacks do not get in. Uh, so this is, this is the game. The game has six bets in it. Um, you can see as an example here, like if you want, you know, the bet of two and a half, a call, uh, pot is, sorry, rather up here. Bet of two and a half and a call the pot is five and a half. If you bet 80% on the flop, you bet like 80% on the turn, you bet roughly 80% on the river, there is 59 big blinds remaining per player. So someone had to check raise a previous streak to get all the money in. Um, in a three bet pot, you know, if you bet the flop for eight, you bet the turn for half, you can shove the river for like 80%. Or you could go more geometric, which we're going to talk about. Um, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this primarily because I see a lot of recreational players three bet a hand like queens, they get a flop like jack 3 3, or maybe it's even kings, and I don't know, there's a flush draw on the board, so they're scared. So they just bet um, like 110% pot, and then they shove the turn for 110% pot. And when you're doing this, you're actually minimizing the EV that you get because you're afraid and you're prioritizing equity denial and protection over maximizing the percentage of the time that you get called. And so this is a problem. Why is betting more and betting fewer streets minimizing the amount of equity? Well, there's a mathematical reason for this, and it has to do with a concept called minimum defense frequency. So you can skip the next minute if you understand MDF already. Um, let me give you an example, and we'll just start by talking about the river. If you bet half pot on the river, right? and your opponent is trying to decide whether or not to call. One thing that they need to understand is that if they call less than two thirds of the time, all of your bluffs start to make money. Uh, they have to call at least two thirds of the time in order for your bluffs to be indifferent, which is an important concept. So if you bet half pot with a bluff, you lose one half pot because you get called, and then you lose one half pot because you get called, and then you win one time when they fold, and you win one pot, right? Well, all the money in the middle, you've lost minus a half, minus a half, and one one. So your, your overall winnings are zero, okay? Minimum defense frequency is, is a really important concept to understand. It does not apply very cleanly to the flop and the turn, especially in two bed pots when there's equity and implied odds and all of these other things. But as the stacks become shallower and shallower and things like backdoor equity um, stop mattering because there are no implied odds, like the money is just getting in. Um, the idea of geometric bet sizing and maximizing the frequency in which you get called becomes more and more important. Okay, so uh, let me give you an example of how a fish might play a hand and what might be wrong with it. If a fish three bets to 10 big blinds and they get called and then they're just nervous, they've got kings on say jack 3-3 three, three with a flush draw, they bet half, uh, they bet, um, pot, 21 and a half. They get called exactly half of the time because, uh, um, implied odds aren't important. It's basically MDF. Um, and then the pot is, uh, 64 big blinds. I hope that math is more or less correct. Maybe 64 and a half. Uh, and then they shove for 69 big blinds. So they're, they're gonna get called half the time on the flop and just under half of the time on the turn. So really, you know, it's like, uh, one out of 1.45 or 1.42, we'll say, percent of the time they get called. So like 23, 24 and a half percent of the time um, 
they're going to get called because they get called half the time on the flop and roughly half the time on the turn. 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0.25 or one fourth, right? Um, so they're going to make 100 big blinds uh, from their opponent one out of four times. Let's imagine a fish that's a little bit less scared for a second. A fish that understands that poker is a game with six bets in it when you want. And uh, after you have three bet pre-flop, there are three additional bets that can be placed post-flop in a natural way, in a geometric way. We imagine this fish instead C bets half the pot and gets called two-thirds of the time. Then they C bet half the pot on the turn and they get called two-thirds of the time. And then they C bet half pot on the river and get called two-thirds of the time. Well, 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 is 28.7% of the time. So at least 4% more than in the previous example. It might not sound like a lot, but 4% more is almost 20% of a larger number than, you know, 28.7% is almost 20% larger than 24%, right? It's a big deal, right? Making 20% more money is a big deal in a game that has small edges. And if you're like a newer player, you got to take these edges. You can't just be scared of, you know, them hitting their flush draw and whatever. And, you know, if you don't believe me, I'll show you. Okay, so on this board, jack-3-3, three, three, two-tone, if the small blind three bets and the button calls, okay, there is another small exception that I want to acknowledge. There's both equity denial and there are action-killing cards. So on a board like this, the, the hand that wants to maximize value immediately the most is going to be a hand like queens because, you know, if an ace or a king comes, then they can't get the money in either. So like I said, there are tangents, there are ways that this whole thing is a little bit complicated. Um, but if you have a hand like aces, okay, aces is a hand here that, that can bet all these different sizes for protection and whatever, but you'll notice that for the most part, the solver bets a healthy size, right? We'll call it 50%. They get called, turn is a blank, okay? And they're going to bet, um, I don't know why, I think maybe I'm in simplified mode or something, uh, but I think that you would see if, if it was possible, the solver wouldn't bet 50 and 50 and 75, they would bet like 66% pot or 60% pot on each street to get the money in evenly. The point is, what you don't see, right, is 125% on the flop with any of these different hands, because no hands value equity denial or getting the money in immediately enough to justify betting a really large size on the flop. All of them kind of want to milk their opponent and put it in kind of folksy terms, right? They want to bet an amount or the opponent is forced to call and then continue to do that over each additional street. So the two things to take away from this video are that poker is a game played with six bets and that will help you plan whether or not you can check a street, whether or not you want to check raise a street and then shove the turn because, you know, you check if there's a bet and a raise, that's two bets, right? So, you you know, if there's a three-bet pot, you check raise the flop, then there's been five bets placed and you can shove the, the turn, right? So it, it helps you plan your actions if you're not really that comfortable playing poker yet. And um, additionally, it works well with understanding geometric bet sizing, okay? So it, um, it'll help you plan how to maximize your value when you have really, really strong hands. So when you have a hand that doesn't worry about equity denial or action killing cards, the way to maximize EV is geometric bet sizing, and poker is a game played with six bets in it. I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and uh, take care of yourself, and if you can, uh, somebody else as well. Okay, bye-bye.